Come, sir. Can, you can start. Secondary diabetes. Secondary diabetes is other form of diabetes. Diabetes or any kind of disease. Which is above or beyond type 1. Simple classification. How we can see, how we can test that our diabetes is up. That patient. Prevalence is not less. Say that sometimes if you miss the cause. So secondary diabetes is accident, cable. Another complexity, who is this? Whether it's endocrinopathy, whether it's a pancreatitis, or whether it's a genetic defect, you need to probe that defect. Otherwise, you're not going to give that proper harmony to that kind of complication. Secondary diabetes thus depends on the direct or indirect impact of the underlying disorders on insulin secretion or sensitivity or utilization or genetic diseases associated. Start with pancreatic disorders. Pancreatic disorder which we used to see in our clinics, either the patient has pancreatectomy or pancreatitis. See, all malnutrition related diabetes or hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis last RSSGI case was there in case series that is called a bronze diabetes and this is a difficult type of diabetes sometimes we do uh, see such patients what are pancreatitis in western countries we have less than one percent but still now in south india we are seeing so many patients from pancreatitis and 50 percent of young patients less than 30 years with have such kind of diabetes in acute pancreatitis there is transient hyperglycemia seen in 50 percent of the cases but in chronic pancreatitis the incidence of diabetes can increase over time and 25 to 30 percent have impaired glucose tolerance throughout the life 80 to 90 percent of patients have fcpd that is fibrocalcific pancreatitis that has over diabetes or igt so nutshell pathogenesis is most likely due to compromise what happened like what pathogenesis is most likely due to compromised blood flow to islets from fibro uh, fibrotic scarring of the exocrine pan pancreas another is malnutrition related diabetes and we have a different nomenclature also from jamaica it's called j type of diabetes and in india we call it fcpd which is associated in south indian patients no history of alcohol no biliary disease other causes of pancreas, pancreatitis exist and beta cell functional loss appears to be correlated with exocrine uh, pancreatic loss also. So protein deficiency might render to beta cells susceptible to damage by toxic viral or autoimmune factors. Hemochromatosis which I uh, pointed out last case is of RSSDI, then autosomal recessive disorder and about 70% of patients have HLA antigen HLA-3, classic triad is hepatomegaly, diabetes and skin pigmentation, that's why it's called bronze diabetes. Not frequently observed nowadays, but you can have a clinical clue when you see such patients. Arthalgia, fatigue, abdominal pain, hepatomegaly, they come with skin pigmentation then you should ask for that kind of disease. And in Sindhi community where patients are going for repeated blood transfusion, thalassemia major, they you, chronic infusion transfusion can have such kind of that now we come to our most important part that is endocrinopathy i want to because this is a very vast topic you can't come uh, complete this secondary diabetes in 20 minutes so endocrinopathy is the very important topic i'll uh, want to decipher some things which will be a clinical clue to all physicians going to their clinic Growth hormone excess, acromegaly, glucocorticoid excess, Cushing syndrome, catecholaminic excess, 
pheochromocytoma, primary hyperaldosterism, hyperthyroidism, tumors of endocrine pancreas. This can lead to such kind of presentation and clinical pulse is that ketoacidosis unusual mainly owing to the compensatory responsiveness of normal beta cell mass. So how to probe such patients? See such patient, this is a secondary uh, diabetes case one I am presenting with a case, clinical case. Here the patient, the features are coarse, acral enlargement, facial coarseness. If you go with the uh, five, uh, uh, if you see the scalp, then you can see the, you, you can see the tongue. You can see lips high uh, that uh, hypertrophied lips and you go for igf calculation then in uh, insulin like growth factor one which is very very uh, commonly seen in the screening of it's highly raised normal range is around 300 and it's in thousands so growth hormone is raised and this igf one is raised this is diagnosis of acromegan and why this happens what happens in acro uh, second uh, uh, this acromegaly characteristic by growth hormone axis and what happens when growth hormone increased more, it is most of the associated with the pituitary somatotroph adenoma, which stimulates hepatic production of insulin like growth factor and the complications of acrine enlargement and other things are due to this uh, IGF-1. GH produces some of its somatic effects directly or some mediated by this IGF. See what uh, uh, growth hormone axis is translate to hepatic factors and hepatic factors then release IGF-1. IGF-1 is the main reason behind the pathogenesis of acromegaly presentation. Other causes include ectopic source of growth hormone, GH releasing hormone, pancreatic islet cell tumors, carcinoid tumor. Glucose intolerance is prevalent in acromegaly at the tune of 60 to 70 percent of patients and these patients doesn't respond to usual treatment because you are uh, missing the clue. So even more frequent than glucose intolerance in glucose uh, GH induced insulin resistance manifested by striking hyperinsulinemia in response to oral or IV glucose and other secretagogue as well as markedly attenuated response access. So if you are giving also insulin this patient does not respond well. Now we come to Cushing syndrome hypercortisolism due to autonomous hypersecretion of cortisol or ACTH from an endocrine this cortisol axis causes visceral obesity, increased hepatic glucose output and insulin resistance together with decrease in the beta cell function. So 2 to 3 percent of uncontrolled diabetic coming to your clinics can have Cushing syndrome. If you have a clinical clue, you can very well. Pheochromocytoma are the rare type of chromaffin cell tumors which release high degree of catecholamine and 25% to 75% of pheochromocytoma have diabetes. And uh, utter, it's a difference in this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, presentation that these patients sometimes have diabetic ketoacidosis. Otherwise, endocrinopathies patients doesn't land in ketoacidosis. But pheochromocytoma patients, because these are highly uh, disturbed patients, they are brittle patients, and there are so many things regarding to what catecholamine axis access so increase insulin degradation if you go for hyperthyroid patient and thyroid hormone how it acts effect of thyroid hormone on glucose homeostasis they degrade insulin in a fast way so whatever insulin production is there if you are a hyperthyroid your that insulin production is degraded so that insulin is not able to be used by the body enhanced secretion of biological inactive insulin precursors increase intestinal absorption of glucose Increase hepatic glucose output via GLUT2, increase lipolysis, gluconeogenesis, uh, and increase sugar production. So, increase in counter regulatory hormone, glucagon, catecholamines. So the patient presenting with hyperthyroidism and not able to, we are not able to treat diabetes because of this uh, background orchestra which is going on. So, endocrinopathy, when do I suspect in a busy diabetes? What are the screens? we should have a high degree of clinical exclusion criteria with a physician mind at not treating a patient on a sugar centric way. We should go and take a deep dive whether there is some association of secondary factors or whether your presentation of diabetes is secondary diabetes. You need to see the master endocrine system, master endocrine uh, pituitary 
for Cushing disease, acromegaly, prolactinoma, pancreas for pancreatic tumors, parathyroid for hyperparathyroidism, thyroid for hyperthyroidism, and adrenal for pyochromocytoma or aldosteronoma. There is always a spectrum because a patient presenting with endocrinopathy, they have spectrum of disorders. They don't come with first whole full-fledged picture of all endocrine presentation. They have one to eight, one to ten degree of A, B, C, D grading, and their shades of presentation can give you a clinical cue that every time patient is going to change, there is coarsening of symptom, there is worsening of symptoms. So, in pituitary, if you have a, uh, a, a, a suspicion of Cushing syndrome, go for overnight dexamethasone suppression test because dexamethasone suppression, what does we, what we do at 11 p.m. we used to dexamethasone tablet, 1 milligram of dexamethasone tablet and morning 8 a.m. we used to take sample of uh, cortisol. Dexamethasone is a glucocorticoid, uh, then you will give, you give it to that patient, then by the feedback, negative feedback, there is decreased ACTS secretion from pituitary. But if ACTS secretion is not there, then you have a higher cortisol level. So this gives a clinical clue that even after giving dexamethasone, you are not able to suppress cortisol. So there must be some cause which is overproducing cortisol. Acromegaly, acral enlargement, you have serum IGF-1 for that. Prolactinoma, a patient, diabetic patient coming with infertility, very common, very common, ED, irregular menses, serum prolactin, you need to go for serum prolactin. So that hyperthyroidism, I have shown uh, that serum TSH, apart from that, you can uh, go for all kind of uh, uh, clinical clues. Hyperparathyroidism, spectrum of serum calcium and phosphorus, you need to go for that. Pheochromocytoma, uh, diabetes, hypertension with paroxysm of undulating symptoms, blood pressure, you need to go for metanephrines. Aldosteronoma, you see a patient with hypokalemia, go for a PRA, uh, plasma, renin, uh, active, uh, plasma renin level and PSE concentration of aldosterone, you can give, uh, get a clinical cue. Pancreas, you have a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor and uh, glucagonoma, somatostatonoma, gastrinoma, insulinoma, they are presenting sometimes to our clinic. And typical necrolytic erythema migricans, nigricans, which is a clinical clue for a pancreatic tumor, glucosinoma. If this kind of skin presentation is present in a patient, don't send the patient directly to a dermatologist uh, or a foot care physician or surgeon because there must be some clinical clue for such kind of tumors also. Most of the treatment part, although given in the in the presentation that I have to deal with the treatment part also, but treatment part is most of them surgical. So I am not poking to that part. Then comes drugs, how drugs can change the life of diabetes. What are the drug induced diabetes? Incidence of drug induced diabetes is more frequent in clinical scenarios than we are exposed to so much of drugs nowadays probably because of unwanted side effects of many commonly used drugs in clinical conditions like steroids, antipsychotics, thiazides, diuretics, cardiac drugs, statins, oral contraceptives and many more. And drug indu indu induced hyperglycemia can present if you have a clinical history proper, take the history, take the family history, take the hyperglycemia pattern and you can very well conclude that diabetogenic effects may be brought about by the effects of islet cell secretion or on an insulin action at hepatic or extra hepatic sites. How glucocorticoids increase, they, uh, they decrease insulin secretions from pancreatic beta cells, they decrease insulin sensitivity and there's NAFA, leptin, adiponectin and very many things which we used to study in our pathology uh, classes, all kind of orchestra of simple uh, jugglery of gluconeogenesis, glucose, decreased glucose uptake and all these kind, adipose tissue, it acts on adipose tissue, decreased glucose uptake, increased lipolysis and it causes hyperglycemia. Drug induced diabetes in antibiotics, fluoroquinolones, HIV antiretrovirals and other anti-infective drugs have been associated and there are a number of lists and there are different mechanisms how they cause antipsychotic drugs. Now it is very common and our gastro friends are using 
like these drugs like any uh, in all of the uh, patients because most of uh, gastro patients are fuzzy patients and physicians also are using these antipsychotic drug and if a patient with antipsychotic drug coming first uh, for the first time for diabetes you need to see for drug induced diabetes also and post covid era we have seen so many patients with uh, drug induced diabetes also other commonly used drug beta blockers hypolipidemic uh, lipidemic drugs thiazide diuretics vasodilators vasopressors they are also been associated and other are genetic form of diabetes i don't want to probe in that because it's a huge complex of uh, pl uh, plethora of symptoms and there are so many things to say about that but immune mediated is type 1 non immune immune mediated is type 2 and insulin deficient resistant monogenic and polygenic diabetes are there and monogenic diabetes you can have modi and then persistent neonatal diabetes mellitus this is a monogenic diabetes neonatal modi and mitochondrial diabetes modi has different classifications i don't want to go and uh, because modi is a different subject and uh, we can have different uh, presentation for that so key points in nutshell the main secondary cause of diabetes are genetic defects of beta cell functions insulin actions disease of exocrine pancreas endocrinopathies drugs chemicals or infection the goals and modalities of treatment for secondary diabetes are almost similar first most of the time in endocrinopathy needs surgery and type 1 and type 2 form of diabetes how they are managed they are also managed with drugs and insulin we need to manage secondary diabetes also with that kind of thing most ca cases of secondary diabetes requires specialist often supported by a multidisciplinary team approach because sometimes we can't offer everything to our patient to take a team approach we need to send the patient to our diabetes endocrinologist friend we need to send the patient to our gynec friend and we need to send the patient for an oncologist review also because this is a team approach we need to offer a patient hormone and that hormone can be only when we have a clinical clue so hyperglycemia is not a diagnosis it's a finding who seeks probes and take deep dive shall find with an wo path kya pathik kushalta kya wo path kya jay shankar prasad ki lines hain wo path kya pathik kushalta kya jis path par bikhre shul na ho navik ki dhair pariksha kya yadi dharaye prati thank you thank you